This is Dave T1963. Can't go scouting today because there's ice all over the road. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over another one of my setups. This was actually the first buck I killed last year in early November uh, 2019. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I use thermals in the evening time to help kill bucks around lakes. All right, so what we have here, we have a large reservoir in North Texas. It's surrounded by private ground. Right around the lake itself, you get some CRP, public land. It's usually a lot of cedars, birch, uh, boat arc, or Osage orange, whatever you want to call it, and uh, just a lot of brush. This one right here, we have a, a little slough that came in from the main part of the lake and created like a marsh right in here. And this is full of a lot of birch trees, uh, you know, some pretty tall trees in here. And this marsh will get anywhere from, you know, three to four inches deep up to a foot deep. But typically around the lake, there, there's quite a bit of ground usually, maybe 10 to 20 yards between the brush line and the lake itself, so keep that in mind. The access road is over here to the west. Uh, there's a huge wheat field up to the northeast where that's primarily in November where the deer are feeding, especially most of the does. Now, historically, the bucks used to bed in these groups of cedars here as well as all along the lake edge, but they really concentrated in these cedars. About three years ago, this got leased out and some guy put a stand and a feeder right next to that fence line and since that time the bucks at least the mature bucks have completely abandoned that they've kind of moved into these little pockets of willows and stuff along the lake and then on this other side of the marsh right about in here is a high spot it's a lot higher than the rest of the the lake edge and it's a blackberry and uh, plum thicket right in here. Really nasty thick, you can't walk through it. And it's not big, it's probably maybe five acres. That is where a lot of the mature bucks are, are bedding. This in the marsh, the does bed all along this marsh and, the, and follow this creek up to the wheat field. So they're, they typically bed all in through here. Primarily though, they stick to this marsh, okay? So the night that I was hunting, it was calling for a, well, actually all day long, it was a south, the wind was coming out of the southeast and blowing back up to the northwest, which is typical for our, our, our archery season. That's usually the predominant wind, even in November. So what I usually do is I come down here, and this is a dirt road, it actually stops right here and you gotta hike your kayak down here, but I get in my kayak here. These banks are about eight to 10 foot tall so I kayak down the lake and I get into about right here and if the wind's steady typically when I hunt this I, I will get out here and I will either set up here or I'll come up here and I'll hunt in trees around here okay in November the does are bed in the marsh I, I presume the bucks are bedded here. Sometimes they bed, there's a lot of bucks signed down here. And then there's, of course, beds here. Now, last year, I found, believe it or not, a scrape. Actually, there was about three scrapes right here. <laughs> right next to where people park all the time. And they were well-used scrapes. So I put a camera in there last year and let it soak. And I got a picture of the, a really nice 10 point in the buck I killed on this camera quite a bit. So I knew that they were traveling this lake edge here. So the evening that, that I went in to hunt, I do what I normally do, and the camera wasn't there any longer, but I came in here and I set up here. Now, the forecast that day was calling for winds out of the southeast at two to three mile per hour. Okay, a lot of people when they would have a wind like this, does bedding here and bucks bedding here and here, they would presume that the bucks are going to skirt around the edge and go, you know, go on the downwind side. If this wind was blowing 15 mile per hour, 10, 15 mile per hour, I would agree with that. And that's why I usually sit up there. But 
I was going to have two to three mile per hour winds. And why is that important? Because in my experience, the, the more mature bucks that get hunted hard will not leave their bed while it's hot outside and they ain't going to leave their bed until the thermals kick in. So that's what I want to highlight here. I came in that night and I, I'd never been in this tree before, but I set up right here. And really this is a lot of CRP with only scattered trees. There's not a lot of trees in there. I set up right here. Okay. With the wind blowing back this way. I actually busted some does right here that ran back further into the marsh. Why did I set up here with the wind blowing that way knowing that bucks would, because when the thermals kick in at nightfall, it's going to start getting pulled out into the lake. Hot air, sunshine, warm water, this cools down quicker, it starts pulling your wind out here. So. Any buck that's bedded along this side here is going to walk this edge. Typically, they actually get down into the sand and stuff and walk this edge coming up. Now, you can see where my wind's going to start cutting and stuff. I picked a spot right here where there was a ditch to where it would, if they walk this every night, never get hampered, they're going to walk around it. But I, I really was thinking the bucks was going to come out of this bedding area right here. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as those thermals kicked in, I had two or three little immature bucks come out of this spot, out of the cedars, and some does out of here. And they kind of worked off this way while the wind was still going that way. And those immature bucks kind of busted me right here. They, they kind of scattered and went in there. But right as the thermals kicked in, I mean, I you could have almost timed it. I was dropping milkweed constantly, and as soon as I felt that swirling and felt those winds starting to pull, that's when that buck that I killed, that eight point, uh, back in November, I think it was like November 3rd or somewhere, somewhere on there, came just like this, skirting this edge of the marsh, and I know his plan was to come down here and go check on these scrapes. By the way, when I parked here, I did check, and that scrape was being used again, but I wound up shooting him right here on the dry ground, and he ran off here and died right about here. But the, what, the thing I'm trying to get at here, now they're all going to wind up up here in the wheat field come nightfall. But in November, when the, the ducks are, or the bucks are primarily concerned with finding hot does. So those bucks are bedding. That's why I didn't think they would be down here. I thought they'd be closer to the doe bedding. They're going to bed close to the does, high ground where they could watch down in the marsh for movement, real thick. They were bedded on this edge, which the wind was blowing this way. And then in the evening time, the mature bucks might have got up and went down in the marsh. I don't know. I mean, I did hear things walking around back in that marsh. But the mature bucks sat right here, and he waited until that thermal shift kicked in. He's been watching that all evening. And then he started skirting this doe bedding area. And like I said, I shot him right here. First time I'd ever climbed that tree and went in there. But it's, you know, this is an area I hunt quite a bit. And I was kind of familiar with it. And I've been busted in the past by thermals and stuff on lakes. So what, what I want to point out here is if you're hunting near water, big bodies of water, and you've got a light variable wind, you can almost bet that come evening time no matter what the the primary wind's doing there is going to be a a thermal shift back towards the hot body of water down here okay just another example of you know the, in this case using thermals and stuff like that it you know once again trail camera strategy comes into play also finding the scrape last year putting a camera on it i let it soak all year i didn't really think i'd get any daytime pictures I was actually shocked how many times that 10 point and the eight point I wound up killing wound up on camera right there. So, you know, having a camera here, I'd had some cameras back over here closer to the wheat field back along the fence and stuff over here. And, and by the way, this, this guy hunts all in here. So typically I don't think these, these bucks really make it past the, the public land until well after nightfall. 
And to get here, there, there is access back down this way, but to get there is a two mile hike. This right here, I mean, you would have to walk in the lake or walk through some nasty thick CRP with blackberries, plum thickets, and that's about, I don't know, maybe a three quarter mile hike. So I really don't ever see any pressure in this area. And I've killed a few bucks back on this other side, but you know, there, there's some good bucks in this area. So that was my plan. Dave T1963 out.